Cheryl Erickson and I'm the Indigenous Focused ECE instructor with Louis Riel Vocational College. Today's video will be a summary of Chapter 8 in Early Learning and Child Care Overview. Please ensure that you are reading Chapter 8 as this video is not a replacement for your daily chapter readings. So Chapter 8 in Early Learning and Child Care Overview will talk about uh, the government initiatives and supports that are in place to help children be successful in life. I am going to um, point out at this time that a lot of the initiatives um, that are in your textbook are American and so as we go through this I'm going to speak more about what uh, initiatives uh, I'm familiar with here in, in Manitoba. But again, it's important to read your chapters uh, because it is pertinent to information and it, it's part of uh, your knowledge as ECEs and what uh, uh, is happening in the world of childcare today. So there is many federal initiatives um, in, that are in place in, in both Canada and the United States. So some of the initiatives that are mentioned in your book are the uh, Economic uh, Opportunity Act. Again, all these initiatives are, are promoting health and wellness and success for young children. So these started um, back in 1964. This was when this first act uh, implemented it. And so it was a, a social program to promote health and education for young children. Um, and it was also um, the beginning of uh, how Head Start was going to evolve. There is also an initiative called the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. That one was implemented in 1965, and it was uh, one of the first supports put into place in the United States uh, to help low-income families. There are No Child Left Behind Act. We did discuss this uh, briefly in, um, uh, I think, Chapter 5, uh, and again, it's it's uh, designed, uh, an initiative designed to help children be successful uh, in school. And uh, again, if they're successful in school, uh, the chances of, of them being successful uh, in life are even greater. And the latest act uh, that was uh, established uh, just in 2015 was Every Student uh, Succeeds Act. And so it's uh, um, based around um, high standards so that children graduate from high school ready for college. And so um, I don't know if, if you can recall a, a few years ago, um, they had done a study in Canada regarding uh, where uh, children, well it was actually a, a general study I think around the world of where children were placed academically and Canada was actually placed on the lower end of, of the spe spectrum uh, curriculum wise. And so Canada is looking at, at um, uh, has kind of uh, looked at their education process as well uh, for students that are currently in school now and how that can be adapted to promote most, more success uh, for our students also. So there's different initiatives um, that have come out of uh, learning about children and how, um, how they, I guess, observing children, studying children, and trying to figure out uh, what helps them to be uh, good learners or what needs uh, can we meet in order for them to uh, rise to the, to the best potential. And so one of the things that uh, came out of studies was um, food and health and meals. And so we know that um, if a child is hungry, they're going to be thinking about their tummy rumbling and uh, where they're going to get their next meal from. That's going to be their sole concentration. They're not going to focus on the curriculum and the classroom teachings. Um, that's not going to be able, they're not going to be able to digest that information because their whole thought process is going to be around that food. So we know uh, that children need to eat. So there's been initiatives uh, that have um, moved into schools that offer lunch programs. So it gives them a really 
a healthy, hearty meal, fills their tummy, uh, sets them up for success in learning. Here in Manitoba, we've had many programs uh, that have moved into schools that are healthy breakfast. And so that's really where our initiatives uh, are more so in Manitoba is the healthy breakfast. So it starts children off for the day on the right foot, their belly's full, um, they'll be more, more apt to um, participate. When your belly is full, you're not hungry and you're energized. So you'll have the energy and the concentration to be able to focus on your schoolwork. Um, and healthy snacks have been promoted as well in the classroom. And so at morning recess, get up, reset, have something to eat, and it sets you up for success for the, the next uh, part of your lesson. Um, and that is even extended to now after school and uh, in some uh, places will offer um, a dinner component uh, because they know that or studies again have shown um, depending on the socioeconomic background uh, maybe where you're living uh, poverty has increased immensely and some children might not go home um, to have a, a meal so this gives them their dinner and um, incorporates, they'll, they'll have a nice nutritious meal uh, before they go home. Head Start program uh, came out of, of one of these federally funded initiatives. And it's very prominent in the United States as well as here in Canada and we have Head Start programs in Manitoba. So Head Start Head Start targets certain socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, in the United States, Head Starts are located in different communities uh, that have the lower, uh, lower, more uh, poverty, and children are enrolled in these programs if they meet the criteria, and, and sometimes the criteria is, is specific to age. And um, these programs promote um, the development of the whole child and school readiness. So we, we hit those four developmental do domains, the, the social, emotional, physical, cognitive uh, development and activity planning takes place um, and children um, are presented with, with materials and mediums and activities to participate and it gets them ready for school. So things like ABCs and counting and simple activities um, that, that set them up for, for success. These programs, again, also incorporate health um, and so uh, as well as safety uh, and nutrition and other social services may be available um, to the families as well. Here in Manitoba, a lot of our Head Start programs focus more on um, the Aboriginal families, Métis families, and the curriculum here is adapted to um, um, certain um, specific cultural or Aboriginal communities. So language might be involved. Children might learn Ojibwe or children might learn Cree. Um, and uh, that's uh, a part of um, teaching them about their culture and the importance of that culture as well as uh, teaching them uh, skills to make them successful in kindergarten and so that they will be successful in school. The Head Start program initiative also includes a family um, component to it. So parents are required to participate uh, in that program as well. So they'll have specific tasks that um, they'll be required to do in that volunteering. And it could be reading a story, it could be helping cooking a snack or preparing a snack. So the parents will benefit um, and develop some skills as well in that interaction uh, with their child within that environment. Head Start has a specific framework um, or curriculum framework rather and so it has specific um, goals or outcomes um, from that program and so you can see here um, in the slide that uh, early childhood development and health services is promoted that's part of the curriculum framework family and community partnerships is is promoted program management and operations their standard of, of of learning and child care outcomes so there'll be specific criteria involved in each of those those um, those headings uh, as to uh, what 
needs uh, or what that program is to accomplish and how it's to help children uh, and families be successful. So when I mentioned, um, you know, Head Start has uh, specific learning outcomes, uh, one of the uh, 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 specifics to uh, Head Start and, and, and learning outcomes is preparing children for school. And so one of the criteria for a Head Start program might be that they won't enroll a child until they're age three. And age three is, is decided upon because it's when a child is, is more uh, independent and has met many of those developmental milestones. And so usually by three, a child is toilet trained and usually by three, a child has um, lang uh, more language um, skills developed, more social skills developed. Uh, more maturity and able to follow um, rules and, and, and be guided. Uh, so they're kind of moving out of that me ego egocentric, uh, able to problem solve and, and critical thinking skills are, are, are developing. And so um, th those are major, uh, major developmental milestones when we think that um, we're, we're preparing children for that education process. Early, early Head Start programs um, can start uh, even younger. So we have programs that might start at, at birth. These programs are um, more uh, common in the United States than they are in, in Canada and in Manitoba. So in Head Start programs here in Manitoba, they start at three and a child independently comes into a daycare program at three and they stay for, um, you know, it's, it's a morning slot or an afternoon slot. So th three hours, three and a half hours in the morning, three and a half hours in the afternoon. Where at, um, in the United States, their programs vary and in some situations it's a full day program for a certain period of time. So um, again, um, you know, these programs in the United States um, are, are have been developed because of the low income, social economic um, backgrounds of, of these uh, children. And so when we look at how those curriculums are designed, again, it's gonna be designed specifically for um, that, where that program is, is located. So for example, if we had a Head Start program open up here in the uh, Manitoba Métis Federation, our program would would uh, our our program and our curriculum framework would be uh, would encompass the Métis culture, and uh, we would incorporate language. We would incorporate as many cultural customs, music, and learn those aspects as well as um, integrating or getting children ready for school. Whereas a program that is uh, opening up uh, in a Cree nation, their focus would be on that culture, the language, uh, and, and so forth. And again, um, there are criteria, so uh, you have to have a physical address. Uh, most Head Start programs won't take children that are homeless, and uh, they are inclusive, so it will incorporate children uh, with disabilities, and as we go further into the slide presentation, we'll talk about those accommodations as well. So early Head Start uh, can even uh, help and, and when I say early Head Start, I'm focusing on an, an American uh, Head Start program that, that starts at birth. Some programs even start before birth, and that is offering some um, prenatal types of programs for, for mom. So prenatal programs would help uh, in the event that mother is seeking medical attention, is learning to eat properly, is learning to care for herself, and as a result, a healthy baby will be born. And then once the Head Start to birth program starts, they can move into that program. And then uh, all those components, nutrition, health, um, learning how to interact with your baby, learning how to care for your baby, learning how to care for yourself, again, promotes the healthy development of, of an infant and, and so on. Um, it enhances physical, social, emotional, and intellectual development. Uh, it, learn, it, it teaches you how to interact with your infant. 
simple things like talking to your baby and, and facial expressions and singing to your child are so important for, for language development and stimulation. Um, and those are, are parts of, of that framework. It, it helps teach parents to, to parent, to be successful, to move towards that self-sufficiency in your parenting, the start of your parenting process. And there's many other uh, initiatives in the United States that aren't um, available here in Canada. So we don't have a migrant and seasonal head start. That's something that, that's not um, available. And we don't have, uh, of course, they have an Alaskan program. Well, and that's specific again to uh, Alaska. So some uh, Head Start research areas when they uh, were developing this initiative and they were looking at the children that could, have, could benefit from that, uh, they wanted to ensure uh, certain criteria would be met. Uh, and so, you know, quality of the program, and we've talked about what makes quality. Again, if you're uh, starting a Head Start program and you're specific to being specific to a certain um, culture, um, for example, it, our Métis Head Start program uh, example that I used earlier, you're going to have staff that have uh, are from the Métis culture, have uh, cultural relevance that they can uh, teach uh, children. So they need to be versed in maybe language and and customs and other cultural things as well. Um, the accessibility, so you want to make it uh, as inclusive as possible um, to all children. Uh, what are the cognitive uh, impacts? Uh, cognitive, when I say that, I refer to your, your brain and, and, and how you're thinking. What are your goals uh, for cognitive development? Social emotional impacts as well. Um, social and uh, emotional development uh, is, is a huge um, um, milestone uh, for children. Uh, you have to d learn how to self-regulate in order to be successful. So, you know, maybe self-regulation is going to be a goal in there. What are your health impacts? So how do we keep children healthy? How do we promote health? And that could be by providing um, nutritious meals. It could be uh, identifying what your children need within uh, that environment. If, if dental health is an issue, uh, providing um, dental support or child's first dentist programs. Uh, how you're going to incorporate the parents uh, in that. What's, what's the involvement supposed to look like? Is it one, uh, an hour, or is it 20 hours of volunteering and what? Um, what specific goals do you want for your parents uh, in this process as well? And within every uh, program, they're going to have standards. Um, and uh, standards are something that uh, programs need to uphold. And standards are something that we're always looking at improvement. So what, you know, what should the children be learning and what should I be teaching? Um, it's going to be unique to your particular program, the uniqueness because of the, maybe the community with, in which it's located, and it's going to be specific to the individual development of the children. So we have to recognize here again that children are unique learners. Some children visual, some children learn um, by hands-on, uh, some verbally, and how we uh, incorporate all that uh, into our program to make it successful. Uh, the outcome, too, of many of these programs, whether they're Canadian programs or American programs, is closing that achievement gap. And so we want to make sure that when children are starting out uh, in the education system, that they're all at level playing fields. And so um, no matter where you're living, um, um, you should all uh, have be, you should all um, be offered the same uh, type of care and education process so that it sets you up for success uh, as you start school. Accommodating diverse learners. Um, I speak about accommodating diverse learners in almost every um, chapter and um, 
it's just a really important uh, topic to discuss and it's such a uh, huge movement um, not only in the education process but when we look at the world and uh, workplaces just accommodating diverse learners accommodating diversity is, is is a huge factor and it it's including everybody and how we go about doing that uh, is is important to uh, the success of the children. So how do we incorporate diversity? We keep therapy schedules confidential. We avoid posting them. Uh, anything regarding a child in a center is confidential. Uh, so even something as simple as an allergy, uh, an, a life-threatening allergy, you want to make sure that that information is known to everybody that works within your center. So pictures of the child could be posted on the wall as, as well as um, what the allergies are. However, there should be some kind of covering of that that says confidential. And so it's there, it's available, and it's accessible for the staff. However, it's, if it's saying confidential and you know that I'm a parent of a daycare center, I, I see confidential, I know that's not for me. But it's important for the staff to be aware, aware of that. Uh, we always want to encourage children to be independent and try new things. And that is not, you know, specific to a child with, in, with, with, divert, with um, any types of um, needs. That's all children. Our goal as caregivers, our goal as parents is to have independent children. So if there's tasks and things that we can, that they can do, we encourage them to do it or we encourage them to try it and then we help them or we scaffold that learning um, in order for them to be access, to, to be successful. Inclusion is including all and, and in every possible um, way you can. So if it means I, we, we have planned a field trip to the zoo. It means that that child that has a wheelchair is coming to the zoo with us and then part of our process is that the bus we hire to take us to the zoo can accommodate a child with, with a, a, can accommodate a wheelchair. So you have to be very uh, mindful of who you have in your program and what their needs are because there may be, um, there may be things that you, ha you have to change or adapt within your program because it's not, um, it's not in their best interest. Include books in your program that portray children with disabilities and you should even be including posters and pictures and um, not only with disabilities but, but culturally as well um, so that children can see a, a wide variety of, of cultures, um, skin colors, um, languages, music is, is all very, uh, it's all very important to uh, learning and growing and acceptance. We want to also promote um, role modeling and acceptance of all children in all families. So that concludes Chapter 8 of Early Learning and Child Care Overview. Please see your instructor if you have any questions uh, or any clarification regarding Chapter 8. Also check in with your instructor to ensure that you haven't missed any class handouts or assignments pertaining to Chapter 8. Mm -hmm.